All right, things are about to get weird. Weird like those odd growths on your grandma's foot that she keeps insisting she show you and that you touch while you're trying to eat your damn oatmeal. Let's get started. <laughs> hey, what's up guys? I'm Jillian Rogue and welcome to my channel. Today I have five weird ass cults for you. <laughs> First, we have the Freedomites, also known as the Sons of Freedom. They stem from the Dukabors, a very large spiritual Christian group from Russia. They were pacifists, lived in communes, and were also known as spiritual warriors. The Freedomites were a faction of zealots within the Dukabors who eventually separated. They were most known for their protests, which started because they didn't believe they should be forced to send their children to school. In their protests, they would not only burn their own and other people's material objects as well as their clothes, they would also normally be completely naked. And, and this was publicly. They justified this by saying that human skin was God's creation and therefore was more perfect than clothes. These protests were often against the materialistic tendencies of society. But between the 1920s and the 1960s, they began using arson and even bombs in their protests against society's emphasis on material objects. These attacks took place on their own property, others' properties, schools, and even a railroad bridge, and they were all committed while completely naked. Luke Durrett was the leader of a cult called the Arch, which was based on New Age concepts. Joseph DeMambro was the leader of a cult called Fountain Golden Way, based on the ideas of the Knights Templar. Together they joined forces and made one big cult called the Order of the Solar Temple in 1984. Now the foundation of this cult was their belief that the Knights Templar was still alive. Their aim was to correct notions of power and authority all over the world, to prepare for the second coming of Christ, and to prepare for the union of all Christians and Islam. Like countless other cults, Luke Drett claimed that he was a reincarnation of Jesus Christ and also that in a past life, he was a Knights Templar. Because of this, he used his authority to choose female members of the cult to have sex with before their ceremonies. The other leader, Joseph de Mambro, claimed that his son was conceived of theogamy or marriage with the gods. He also claimed that his daughter was the product of immaculate conception, like how Jesus was born by Mary in the Bible. This group also revolved much around survivalist behavior and doomsday prep as they believed the world was ending via volcanoes. Members were told that their only hope for survival was to rid themselves of their physical bodies and that they would then be reborn on a planet orbiting Sirius. Members were required to gift the elders of the group to make donations and to pay a hefty tuition. Those who paid the most were those who were chosen to move up in the ranks. They built lodges and churches while living lavishly off the rest of the money. Luke Jurett was a former doctor who was used as the face of the group. He would give lectures on love and biology and then turn the lecture to his apocalyptic beliefs, claiming that the only way to survive was to join them. Three members of the cult, including a three-month-old baby, were found stabbed to death on September 30th, 1994. They were killed by two members of the cult under the orders of DiMambrio because he claimed that the child was the Antichrist himself. One of the victims, Antonio de Toit, previously admitted to other members that he had actually helped install special effects machines that the cult used to trick the members into believing that they were seeing miraculous visions. Then, on October 5th of 1994, 53 members were found dead in Switzerland and Canada in the rubble of fires. They had committed suicide with poison while other members held bags over their heads and others had been shot in the head. They were wearing white ceremonial robes and arranged in a circle with their feet touching in front of a temple. 
The following year, 16 more members committed suicide in the same ritual. Heaven's Gate may be the most notorious doomsday and mass suicide cult, and I'm sure you all already have heard of it, but it's still noteworthy. Marshall Applewhite is known as the leader of the cult in the 90s, but he actually started it in 1974. He also did not start it alone, but with a woman named Bonnie Nettles. Bonnie was a music teacher and a nurse in a psychiatric facility in Texas, and the two met during Applewhite's stay at the facility. When Marshall was finally released, they took a six-month-long road trip across the United States and renamed themselves Bo and Pete. In 1974, they formed a group with followers that they called The Crew in Southern California. Bonnie Nettles died in 1985, but Marshall continued the group without her. Marshall was yet another cult leader who had convinced his following that he was Jesus reincarnated, but also that God was in fact an alien. They believed that the end of times was coming and that Marshall, who was Christ, was leading them to their salvation. According to him, their salvation was boarding a spaceship that was coming for them with the Haley Bopp comet that passed in 1997. In order to board that spaceship, they believed that they had to shed their earthly bodies. So just before the comet passed, they ate applesauce laced with barbiturates, drank vodka, and tied plastic bags around their head, then laid down with a purple blanket covering them and died. Oh man, the, the image of them with like all their Nike shoes sticking out is just creepy and actually Nike discontinued that style of shoe after the suicide happened. 39 members were found dead and their suicides took place over the course of three days in May of 1997. The group carried out a plan where 15 of them died assisted by eight others, then another 15 assisted by another eight, and then finally the final eight including Marshall Applewhite. The group was actually originally told that they would be able to board the spaceship without having to shed their earthly bodies, but when Bonnie Nettles died, Marshall changed that and said that they would, in fact, have to die to board the spaceship. Applewhite also preached the Master Cleanse, which was abstinence from sex, junk food, and socializing. They also had to do everything exactly the same. If they're making pancakes, the pancakes all had to be exactly the same size, and the syrup had to be poured on the exact same way. This is very much so common practice with cults. You have to abandon your whole belief, everything you've ever practiced and ever learned, and totally adopt theirs. Applewhite and eight other members actually underwent castration to help them abstain from sex. Marshall Applewhite was actually fired from being a music teacher in the 1970s for having sex with a male student, and his castration was believed to be him trying to find a cure for his homosexuality. A former member claimed that the eight members who were castrated were excited about it and wouldn't stop giggling and smiling before the process. Besides their mass suicide, the cult is also known for advertising online with their website and many videos urging others to join them. It's actually pretty creepy. There's even one video called Last Chance, which Marshall says it's everyone's last chance to join them and be saved. Check it out. I don't want to take away from the seriousness of the moment because I am concerned that Time is short, last chance to evacuate the human kingdom, planet Earth, to get out of this space so that this garden can be recycled. I hope for your sake that you have a degree of curiosity about what I have said on this tape so that you will look a little further. If you condemn me thoroughly 
and call me the antichrist or whatever you want to call me it's not going to hurt me it's going to hurt you if you condemn us you'll be condemned nothing can hurt me the thing that i could experience here that would be dismal from your point of view would maybe help me get back to the kingdom level above human more quickly and that's what i desire to do this is your chance i'm here i can take you out of here i can lead you into that kingdom level above human that can't happen unless you leave the human world that you're in and come and follow me time is short last chance <sighs> literally, literally so creepy. Their website is still up today and is ran by two members believed to be Mark and Sarah King who say that they want to make sure that their information is available for all of mankind in preparation of their return. I'll tell you who I am as to whether or not you believe who I am or not is up to you. I'm from Kingdom Level Above Human. What does that yield? That yields immediately that the vast majority say, cult. Now this next cult, if you want to call it that, is a bit sillier. Nancy Leader had encounters with gray aliens ever since she was a small child. In 1993, she began to believe that the aliens who were from a planet called Zeta Reticuli were consistently communicating with her through an implant they put in her brain. She says that at first she was unsure about whether or not it was real, so she asked them for a sign. That sign came shortly afterwards when she was at the movies and she opened up a bag of individually wrapped Starbursts to find one unwrapped. Now this clearly proved the alien's amazing power, so she immediately packed up and moved to Wisconsin to start Zeta Talk. She would make predictions based on the information that the aliens gave her and made appearances on Coast to Coast AM that she soon became quite known for. She announced that in 2003, Nibiru would pass by Earth and cause catastrophic damage, including the infamous pole switch. In the early 2000s, she began doing live chats on an internet forum where people would ask the Zetas questions and she would respond for them. For preparation of the pull switch, she advised people to stock up on canned goods, build underground shelters, and to, get this, kill all their pets. Which probably honestly made me hate her more than anyone else. <laughs> When nothing happened by May of 2003, Nancy claimed that it was a white lie put out by the aliens to throw people off because if she disclosed the real date of the pole switch, the government would declare martial law and confine people to big cities to ensure that the majority of the population died. She still claims that Planet X is just motionless behind the sun where we just can't see it. She lost most of her followers because of this, but still holds her live chat sessions on a forum called Godlike Productions. She was almost as big as a fraud as Hogan Fukunago, Fukunaga, however the fuck you say his name. He led a modern Japanese sect known as the Foot Reading Cult. Now this guy said that he was both Jesus Christ and Buddha and that if you did not pay him $900 so that he could examine your feet, you would surely die. This happened between 1994 and 97 and he claimed that he could diagnose illnesses, physical ailments, personality traits, and so on and so forth just by looking at someone's feet. For example, he said that short toes mean you have a short temper, and that fat toes mean that your life will be full of good fortune. Now, thank God his followers finally caught on, and in 2005, he was sentenced to 12 years in prison for fraud. All right, guys, that's all I have for you guys for today, but I do have five other 
really, really, really weird cults that I really wanted to include in this video, but it would have been way too long. So if you like this video and you want to hear that one, give me a thumbs up down below so I know. Also, leave me a comment down below and let me know what you think. Did you guys know everything that I just said about Heaven's Gate, for example? Because when I started doing this video and I knew I was going to do Heaven's Gate, I didn't know a lot of it myself. Also, as always, please, please subscribe. It means so much to me if you did. Put on the notification bell so that you can always see more weird and creepy shit from me. All right, all my little poop kings and queens, I will see you later. I know that the presentation of this little tape is not what I would call skilled or polished or doesn't have the things that humans like to see in their presentations as far as development of a presentation. But I know that it has the truth. But I know that it has the truth. The truth. The truth. Truth.